Today we're going to be talking about the cruise embarkation day process and we're going to be going through the 10 tips that you'll want to know, including the one thing that you need to know because it can result in you being denied boarding on your cruise ship. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website and blog Life While Cruised, where we help thousands of cruisers a month get ready for their cruise with our travel tips. Now today what I'm going to be doing is going through 10 tips that you need to know uh, for your cruise boarding day or your embarkation day and really going through the process from A to Z and this is really geared towards either new cruisers or even if you haven't been on a cruise for a while. Now before I get started with the tips I did want to let you know that if you do like this video please give it a thumbs up uh, that really helps me to know that you like this content and that you'd like me to create more content similar to this. And as well, if there is something that you'd like to let me know, if you have a comment, please do leave it in the comment below and consider subscribing to the channel. So if you're a new cruiser, you may be wondering about, well, what are the specifics? What do I need to do to get prepared for the first day of the cruise? Is boarding a cruise similar to boarding an airplane? Uh, there's so many little details and I really did want to just go through those basics um, really to guide new cruisers because sometimes after we've been cruising for a while we kind of forget what it's like to do this for the first time and just I wanted to go through step by step what the process is. So the first thing that you need to do for the cruise embarkation process is actually something that takes place a few weeks before your embarkation day. And that is actually going on the website and filling in your online uh, check-in. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go onto the cruise line website. You'll do that with your reservation number and you'll just fill in your online check-in. I do suggest that you do this about two to four weeks and you could even do it before, but at least two to four weeks before your cruise. And the reason that I suggest that is because if there is anything, if there is a name that's spelled wrong, if you realize when you're putting in your passport information that maybe your passport is expiring soon, those are things that you still have time to take care of. So do uh, complete your online check-in and then following completing your online check-in, you'll print out your boarding documents and just get those ready, put them maybe in an envelope or with your other uh, information for your cruise and get it ready for your cruise boarding day. Number two, print out your luggage tags. Now, while you're doing your online check-in, part of the process is going to be after you print out your, um, your documents, your boarding documents is gonna be that you can print out your luggage tags. So those are gonna be in paper now. And in the past, they actually used to come mailed to your home. They would come as stickers, but now you can actually just print them out. They're in paper and there's a folding process. So you'll see that right as you print it out. It's not hard and they actually are surprisingly sturdy. So print out a few luggage tags. I usually print out like at least two per person, even if we're only going to be using one because I want to have one handy in case when I fold it up, well, if I make a mistake or something. So just print out your luggage tags. And just something that I did want to mention is if you don't want to use the paper ones, some people like to buy these plastic uh, coverings that you can buy from Amazon. And this way you can reuse these for several cruises and that can be kind of handy instead of folding up the luggage tag and then stapling it the morning of your cruise. Tip number three, what are the cruise line luggage restrictions? So cruise lines are actually not very strict about luggage restrictions. I have seen in some cases where they do say that they recommend one suitcase per person uh, with the recommendation of no more than 50 pounds uh, per bag. However, I have not actually seen anything really being enforced on cruise lines, so I wouldn't worry about it too much, but just, you know, follow a rule of thumb of whatever you're flying with, just bring that and follow that restriction. If you are driving, then just use common sense because of course you or the porters are going to need to carry that, you know, and bring that around. So be reasonable with the, the size of the luggage that you're bringing and with the weight of it. Now, I usually for a seven day cruise do just fine with one suitcase per person and, and I'm an overpacker. So you can use that as a bit of a guide. 
Number four, what are the prohibited items? So there are actually items that are prohibited on a cruise ship. Now, some of them are the obvious ones, like you can't bring illegal drugs and you can't bring any weapons on board, but some less obvious items are that you can't bring irons and you can't bring steamers on board. And the reason is because these are a fire hazard. So you cannot bring these on board. And something else that you cannot bring on board, you may have heard if you've been, you know, watching some other cruise videos or cruise packing tip videos, is certainly that you might want to bring some extra power outlets by bringing a power bar with you. Now, you can't bring, it's prohibited to bring a traditional power bar like the one that you might be using in your den or in your TV room. And that is because there's usually a surge protector on it. So cruise lines often do allow you to bring one that is a non-surge protected power bar. It might be hard to know which one is which. Um, so there are some that are like cruise approved on Amazon. So I will leave a link below. And the one that I really like is they have now extra USB outlets in them and extra outlets. And it is handy because a lot of cruise ship cabins will have only maybe two outlets so and some of them are starting to have usb outlets which is great but a lot of them just just don't number five make sure you bring some carry-on luggage for a uh, cruise boarding day and the reason is that on the day that you board your cruise ship you're going to be giving your luggage to the cruise porters and after that you're not going to see your luggage for several hours so you will want to have a carry-on bag and in it you'll just want to pack all the stuff that you'll need for that day now i do have a whole separate video on what to pack like essentials for your cruise carry-on bag. So if you do wanna see that, I will leave it in a card above and I will also link it in the description below. So if you wanna kind of have some good tips, a good packing list for your cruise carry-on bag, then I will leave that for you. Number six, what time should I arrive for boarding my cruise ship? Now you'll hear two schools of thought on this. You'll hear one school of thought, which is arrive early, as early as you can, my school of thought. And you'll also hear avoid the lines and arrive late. Now I'll tell you for me, I feel like you should arrive early. And the reason being it is your first day of your cruise vacation. So why not make the most of it? At the same time, cruise uh, lines have gotten really efficient at the cruise ports in getting you um, through the boarding process and onto the ship pretty quickly. So I do think now that you can arrive pretty early. The time that you can arrive, I would say somewhere in the range of about 11. You might want to arrive a little bit earlier than that or a little bit later than that. Probably between the times of 12 and 1, that might be the busiest time. But that's what you should do for your cruise. Number seven, if you're wondering uh, what to expect when you arrive at the cruise port, I'm going to go through that briefly. So basically, if you are taking either a taxi or you're driving in uh, or you're taking an Uber, what's going to happen is as you approach the cruise port, you are going to have um, a little bit of security as you're entering. And oftentimes it's like a little booth and they will be actually asking you for a couple of things. So have these handy with you. And that is having your cruise documents and your passports or your government ID. So before you enter into the cruise port, oftentimes you will be asked for that, like as a preliminary sort of entrance. After that, you're gonna follow a little road. Sometimes you will see several cruise ships like in Miami or Fort Lauderdale and at other cruise ports, you might be the only ship that's there. You will, I'll give you a little tip, probably see your cruise ship at a certain point. So have your camera ready because it's something great. You might take that first picture of your cruise ship, uh, head on over and you're going to arrive into what looks like sort of organized chaos. Uh, chaos. And basically this is going to be, um, you'll have people that are just going to be directing traffic and they're going to lead you to letting your luggage off at the cruise port. You're going to have porters that are going to come and they're gonna come and take your luggage from you. Um, something important that you'll wanna make sure that you don't do is make sure that you keep your cruise documents at this point and your passport or government ID on you. Do not make the mistake of putting this into your luggage and handing this to the porters. This has happened to people before and they have been denied boarding. So it's very, very important. Hand that over. It is customary to leave a little tip. So sometimes you might want to have a few extra dollar bills with you in case you want to do that. If you've arrived by car, you'll probably go park your car right after that. 
we actually oftentimes do arrive by car. And so what we do is we let off our um, suitcases with the porter. My husband oftentimes lets me off. I stay with the carry-on luggage and then he'll go and he'll park the car. We like to park at the port just because we like the simplicity and convenience of leaving at the end of the cruise and just going on our way home. We don't want to take an extra hour or so to go get our luggage, um, maybe at a park and cruise hotel, but that's certainly an option if you don't want to park at the port. Number eight, so once you've parked your car or you've settled your things and you head into the cruise port, you're going to go through security. And that security is going to be, basically you'll have the same kind of machines that you would have when you're going into an airport. Um, so little x-ray machines and they're gonna x-ray your cruise carry-ons and you know, you'll be walking through it. So it's similar to an airport, but it's gonna feel a lot less stringent. Uh, even though they are, they do have a very good security, it is gonna feel a little more relaxed. It's definitely a fun atmosphere when you are getting on a cruise ship. Always, just a little tip for you, always keep your cruise documents and your passport handy because every step of the way, you're gonna be asked usually for this information. Number nine, so at this point we are checking in. So when you arrive um, after security, you're gonna be in a large area and that area is gonna be your check-in uh, area. And there's gonna be several check-in booths. There may be 15 to 25 or more um, different booths open up for you to be able to check in. So that's why it really doesn't take that long to check in anymore. And you've already completed your online check-in. So they're really ready for you when you arrive uh, in that line. And basically what you're gonna do at that point is give your cruise documents and your passport or government ID information. And they're also gonna ask you for your credit card. So that's something to have handy as well. And the reason that they ask you for that is any additional expenses that you might make on the cruise ship is gonna be going on that credit card. But you're not gonna be, of course, taking out that credit card on the ship. What they're going to be doing instead is giving you a cruise card. And that cruise card is gonna be your key to open up your cabin door. It's also going to be uh, your kind of your credit card. So every time you pay for a drink or you might go to the store and buy something, it's going to go on that cruise card instead of carrying around a credit card. And it also is gonna be used when you get on and off the ship. It also becomes like your security card, your identification. Now that's in the case of the majority of cruise ships. I will mention something that Princess Cruises does have the Ocean Medallion program that is available on several of their ships. So this is the same process, but instead of a cruise card, you'd have the medallion. I will leave a link to the information um, about the Ocean Medallion and there will be a video to come in the future about this, but this is the same process, but it would be using the medallion instead. So also something that they'll be doing at the counter is they'll give you usually a little folded map of the cruise ship. And then this way, when you do board, you'll be able to orient yourself to see where you might wanna go and where the pools are, where your cabin is. So it's really handy. Keep that uh, map of the, um, of the cruise handy as well. Number 10, you're basically almost ready for boarding. So usually if you have a little bit of time to wait, uh, before boarding, if you did arrive early, there's gonna be a lot of seating. So you'll be able to sit down and you'll be able to wait to board. So once they allow you to board, they're gonna call uh, different groupings of numbers and you will start the boarding process. Um, as you approach the ship, you will uh, have a little spot where there's usually a photographer set up with a background and you can take an embarkation day photo if you like to. That makes a really nice souvenir. If you don't wanna take the photo, you can just wave on by and keep walking. You're gonna usually walk up an enclosed gangway and that's gonna lead up to the cruise ship. As you're getting onto the cruise ship, you are going to show your cruise card. So by this point, you were able to put away your passport and put away your cruise documents and you're gonna be getting on the ship with your cruise card. And they're going to be seeing a photo of you if you've just taken the photo over at your cruise uh, boarding check-in, or they may take the photo as you get on the ship. And then basically you're boarding. 
Now, if you did want to know more about now what happens once you've boarded the ship all the way up to sail away, I do have another video and it's all about making the most of embarkation day. So I'm going to leave that above. Um, so do check that out. Now, I hope that you found this video helpful about basically the A to Z of the cruise boarding process. And it really is the basics, but I hope that this is information that you needed, that you did find it helpful. Uh, please let me know in a comment below if you have maybe another question, something I didn't cover. Um, I would love to hear it. If you have extra tips that you can add, I would really appreciate that. Leave it as well, because it can certainly help somebody else. Um, I know that 100% if you've cruised before and there's something that I didn't mention, please do mention it. I really appreciate it. So if you did find this helpful, please give this video a thumbs up, share with a friend, and do consider subscribing. Now I am on Facebook and I am on Instagram and I'd love to connect with you there. Happy cruising!